Is it you? Is it me? I think it is you. Oh my god. <gasps> You're getting pulled over? Yes, I think so. For what? Excited, but also surprised that we're already at this point in the podcast. I know. Because this is now the follow up episode to our first location on this yes. road trip. Yes, yeah, so we're on a road trip currently to check out the East Coast and potentially look at locations that we can live in or just, you know, check out new, new spots we just haven't explored yet. So we're exploring Florida, Savannah, Charleston, Charlotte, Raleigh, and then potentially some other cities in between. So we are really excited that the first location and the last episode we discussed was Florida. Yeah. And now we're back in this episode to discuss our what actually happened in Florida. And we've been documenting our trip this whole month, actually weekly on YouTube, every Sunday. Yeah. And the vlogs are just a space you get to see like any little locations or fun little things we do weekly. But the podcast is a space where we're going to be way more introspective and yes. discuss kind of the details and the things that, you know, we might not have got on camera. No, honestly. exactly. Like, you know, moments we get with people or things that people say that, you know, it's hard to capture via video. Yeah. yeah. So this is where the podcast is and this is what you're going to be listening to when you hear these episodes. We talked about what we expected of Florida, but now that we've experienced it, I have a lot to say. Yes. And can I just sum it up in one word? Surprising. Yeah. Pleasantly, two words, pleasantly <laughs> surprising. I loved Florida more than, than I, thought I thought I was going, going to, to. Absolutely. honestly. Absolutely. I mean, we did kind of brush upon it on the last episode, which I highly recommend because it might be a fun, like, full circle moment. I mean, yeah. I kind of I kind of like re-listening to it, being like, my expectations or my predictions on certain things weren't fully wrong, but it still exceeded what I thought it was going yeah. to be. Like, they met my expectations and more. Exactly. You know, which I was like... You know, sometimes you get surprised by that, sometimes you don't. I really was surprised. Like, I, I feel like we walked into Florida, like, just really, like, not knowing much about it, honestly. Yes. And so, which also creates this element of surprise, which is really fun to also walk into, you yes. know? And, you know, a big part of, obviously, our goals of this sort of road trip is to meet new people, you know, figure out locations that we potentially want to live in, etc. And, but we already discussed that Florida isn't a location that we, we thought was going to be a place that we would potentially live in, more of a transitional period. Yes. You know, like, this was going to be a, a part of the trip that we just started at, and it's going to be the longest. It was the longest, you know, yeah. so it allowed us to kind of be able to create a space where we, you know, understood our sort of, you know, routine of the days, things exactly. like that, you know. Because yeah. we were in Florida for five weeks. Yeah. So we really got to settle into this location. And like Kristen kind of said, we were located in Jensen Beach, which for Florida, like most well known is like Miami, Orlando, Orlando. Tampa. But like Jensen Beach is a very I much didn't of know it. I, I didn't don't know, know much it. of it. Yeah. It's, mu it's very much a vacation town, to be really transparent. Like, yeah. it's not that people don't live there, it's just not like a city hub that people know well but I will say that it was kind of funny we're from Long Island New York yeah. and obviously my aunt who graciously let us stay in her place she's also from Long Island New York yeah. even though we were in Florida I met more Long Islanders oh, than I met actual God. Floridians honestly yeah, I agree which probably made me feel very much at home because of it honestly because it's like where are you from? Which county? Suffolk or Nassau? And if you're from New York, you know. You yeah. know that you know that reference, which is kind of fun, honestly. Yeah. I will say one of my favorite encounters wasn't a Long Islander. Oh yeah, uh, fair, fair. And it also really made the, the it started the trip so strong. Yes. And we did catch this on the vlog. I which know. is actually so funny because normally that's I think that's really hard to do, to be yes. fair. Cause like, you know, like we always try to be as present as possible, you know? Yeah. But on day freaking one, yeah, you know, like I think it was actually day one. Yeah, we met this woman. Her name was Lilia, and she was at the beach. And her dog came by and walked over to us. And she was the most friendliest person I've ever met in my life. Like I felt like you know she's someone I wanted to just like rip a page from her life book. You know the way 100%. that she approached us was so 
like natural. Like she came over to us with her dog. Obviously the dog also really helps. I just wanna be very clear as well. But her dog came over and she's like, do you want the dog to sit on your lap? And I was like, excuse me? And she's like, yeah, like she's friendly. Like she'll jump on your lap. And I was like, and you, she jumped on Shannon's lap, sat there and she started talking to us and was like, you know, you guys are like, you know, you're beautiful, this is this, can I take your photos? Like I take good photos. And like, it was the cutest thing. She's just like, you know, such a mom too. Like the way that she was like talking to us. Yeah. But the, but the thing that I loved about her and a lesson I wanted to take from her was the fact that she just bravely came, went up to us without feeling this sort of anxiety or nervousness of talking. Cause I feel like as I've gotten older, I tend to shy away from doing that. Like I, I feel know. like when I was younger, I used to like have this sort of bravery about talk, but talking to people. The strangers. The strangers. And I feel like, like as I've gotten older, I've had a harder time like just approaching people and being like, hey, in, this, in the most random of ways, if I have no sort of connection, if I don't start with one, do you know what yeah. I mean? And Lilia like did not care. Like I don't even think if she had the dog, she would still have approached us, I felt. A hundred percent. She was just one of those energies that like exuded warmth, but you also just felt like you said, just to, like, the fact that she like came up to us, presented her dog, but then proceeded to also like have a photo shoot with us yeah. was so funny. But it was so welcoming too. It's not like I've like like you said, like I feel like as I've gotten older, it's gotten harder for me to like break out of my shell. Or like it just takes more mental effort for me than it yeah. used to back in the day. I've just riddled with insecurities. <laughs> I but think insecurity is like anxiety really. That's just what I like, mean. You know, but it's just like insecurity of projection. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's what I mean by that. Where it's like I don't know how people perceive it. But then it's moments like Lilia where I'm like kind of brought back to being like yeah, why Why wouldn't I just go up to someone chit-chat if the moment arises, do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes I talk myself out of these situations, yeah. but watching, well, not even watching, but experiencing it on the other end, it really, like, made my day. And that was the first day of our trip, and I'm still thinking about it, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's just like, I want to bring that magic to my daily life. Yeah. And that is what you and I are seeking in every place we go to. It's not just about the location, but the community that we can build for ourselves. And I think that's what really makes a home, not just the place, but the people, you know? And we talked to her for like 40 minutes. Like it wasn't like this cat, it wasn't just like, oh, like have the dog take a quick photo or let me take a photo. Yeah. No, it ended up being like this really nice conversation because she approached us with such like warmth and kindness. And yeah. then we find out she's from Lithuania and yeah. she has a daughter who like lives there and she's visiting with her husband. And she was just like cracking us up because she was like, her husband was nowhere to be found, but she was just like, who needs a man? Like, <laughs> we're, I'm having a good time by myself. And we were just like laughing. And Kristen, uh, to her note, this woman didn't really speak that much English, to be yeah. totally honest. So she had a bit of broken English. But regardless of the language barrier, like that she, you know, bravely overcame on top of the social anxiety of meeting someone else, yeah. she still like blazed right through it. And it didn't matter if there was some mistranslation. I could totally understand where she was coming from or what she was trying to do. Yeah. And I was just thinking, because obviously Kristen, she's like a mother figure. She was older. And it made me think like how young I am. And I'm like, man, like I just, like you said, take a page out of her book and take that energy with me, even in my youth. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just want to do that more. And like, I, I just think the opportunities would arise so much more if I did that. Yeah, you know or just I mean? meeting more people if you put yourself in those situations, which are not easy. I'm not yeah. gonna say that they are. I mean, she's very lucky that she had the dog because the dog <laughs> really opened up the door. But I don't doubt, knowing her personality, that she would have done it without the dog. You I know agree. what I mean? Well, which actually, so to be cool. fair, she did do it without the dog because she met mom, which yes, was the, this which was is the weirdest wild. Little circle moment. Yes, my uh, our mom, which she absolutely love but she has a we realize she has a problem. problem this is funny she has a shell collecting addiction yeah she, she cannot walk away from a shell and it's so funny you know yeah. and as my mom was as our mom was collecting shells this woman who she did not know her name at the time literally picked up shells and gave them to mom being yes. like you would like this one yeah and my mom's like oh what a sweet woman you know they go about their day comes back to see her have like sitting with us chit-chatting and she's like oh my god you're the shell lady you know yes. and they and we're just like oh my god that's so funny and she was like and then she proceeds to go let me take your photo again you know yeah. like with all of us so again like absolutely love this interaction with her and it really again like starts off this trip really strong and also constantly reminds this message of 
being able to be brave and bold and how that will impact your life. Yes. And I think that in do in, in meeting her, that's already giving me that lesson constantly, you know? Honestly, it gives me an idea of like, you know, why not? What do you have to lose? Like, you know, yeah. the conversation dies sooner. Like, that's not a big deal. Like, they're doing yeah. you a favor, end of day. Or, best case scenario, let's look at the positive side. You talk to someone for 40 minutes, having a photo shoot with their dog, and just talking about life, and still thinking about it a Today. month later, because it was such an amazing interaction. Like, I'm gonna, rather than think about the rejection, which I have to, you know, rid myself of, I rather think of the positive outcome of, like, like, maybe this could be a new friend. Maybe this is just like a really great way to start my day. Like, and that happened to us a lot, actually. No, it like, is wild to me. I know. Honestly, actually, one of my other favorite interactions was like actually kind of recently was the which never happens to us ever yeah. was that person that got, got got our coffee. Oh my god, so, so nice. nice. But I liked that idea, like how sort of not. Um, committal it was, you know what I mean? Like this sort of like, again, this interaction that for, not forces, but kind of starts a conversation. So, yes. and I never thought about it really. And I was like, no. and I also want to pay it forward and do it in our next places. Yes. This guy's name, and I actually wrote it down because he was name is Michael. Oh, Michael. Yeah. So Michael, it was actually funny. We're at the cafe working and he starts chit-chatting with you. And well, no, he didn't chit chat. No, no with but me. he was like trying. He didn't, he didn't know he was well, talking to you. Well, let me explain, okay? Yeah. So, this is kind of funny. And this is like the New York mentality Which that I, like, I need to rid myself of. So in New York, if you're a New Yorker, you kind of know this, which sounds awful. And I know how bad this sounds, but like, and I think it's also really, as a woman, I need to be careful, obviously, even yeah. more so. But in New York, usually, especially in Manhattan, yeah. if there's a stranger, like, trying to talk to me, to be totally honest, or I like kind of ignore it. It's just, yeah. it's kind of a New Yorker thing. I mean, maybe it's, I shouldn't actually generalize. Maybe it's a me thing. But I just, you know, I'm kind of just tunnel vision into whatever I need to do. Like from point A to point B, I'm just trying to get my coffee. I'm not trying to bother anybody. Like, you know, it is what it is. All of a sudden I hear this man, and it's just me and this one person. I hear this man being like, woman, uh, excuse me, woman, like, do you want me to get coffee? That's what I kind of hear in the muddle. And I'm thinking to myself, what a rude ass jerk. Like, <laughs> this guy is talking to the barista. Like, I just ordered my coffee. Like, why is he trying to cut me in line to get his coffee? Like, this is so rude. But then I find out, he's like, excuse me, did you hear me? And I was like, and then I look at him and I'm like, oh my God, like what's going on? Because again, I'm thinking that there's some altercation yeah. in my head because that's where my brain went to immediately. Which is, which is not, a not, not a good thing. And then to come to find out, he goes, instead, my ear heard it wrong. And he goes, can I buy you a coffee? And I was like, oh. And I was like, like, I wanted, like, I'll take your order. I'll, I'll take your order. And I was like, excuse me? And I was like, you do know I got two coffees and a muffin. I was like, you don't have to, knowing that now. And he was like, no, no. He goes, actually, every morning, I like to do a good deed and pay it forward. And today is my good, you're the first person. Like you're the person. first one I saw. You're yeah. the first person I've seen this morning, so I'd love to pay it forward. And I was like, oh, my God, no way. So then I come to find out, again, what a lovely interaction I because I was open to it. I didn't go, well, to be fair, I did start my New Yorker mentality of being yeah. like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. And then opened up to, wait a second, hi, my name is Shannon, hi, I'm Michael, and then tells me he's meeting a friend in Brooklyn, and he's like really excited that like tomorrow he's flying out to hang out with his friends for the weekend. And we had this, again, lovely exchange. And to Kristen's point, I think about this and take a page out of now Michael. Liliana, Lily, yeah, Liliana and Michael's book. Lilia, yeah. Lilia, sorry, Lilia and Michael's book of approaching people with obviously kindness always, you yeah. know. But what I thought of their approach was so interesting was Michael's just like, hey, I'll buy your like $3 coffee or whatever yeah. it is. And then it just opened up a really nice conversation. Oh my God, are you joking? Is it you? Is it me? I think it is you. Oh my God. Are you getting pulled over? Yes, I think so. For what? You said I've never been pulled over, so I don't know if it's this okay. is proper. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah, to make sure everything's realized, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah of, of course. course. Oh my god, I feel so bad. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Um, so anyone who's watching the podcast over listening, we just got pulled over. Or said I got pulled over. I made an oops, and yeah. I 
was obviously speeding while we were talking. Through it, traffic. To Through be it, fair. traffic. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not condoning speeding. I just want to be no. very clear. I was like, I was in the wrong. I deserve the ticket. I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to be like, how dare he, this person, the cop, do his job. Do his job. Like, it's fine. But it's also just like, I also feel a little discriminated against because I'm the only New Yorker going the same speed as everyone else. And then he's like, do you know that you were blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, okay. Just give me the ticket and let me go, please. Like, this sucks. It's my first ticket. I and I was so confused because I've never gotten pulled over in my life. So I was like trying. So I was like going through three lanes. I was like, am I getting another ticket for this? Because I don't know where to park because I'm in the highway. Like, this is so awkward. Yeah. So, yeah, we got a ticket. Um, yeah. You know, earlier I said, oh, I love Florida. Fuck Florida. No, I'm kidding. I'm actually kidding. Um, no, I no. still like Florida. I deserve a ticket, it's no big deal, but that was real. Um, but, but back to our regular programming. Let's go back to our regular programming, the nice people that we meet. Yes. Um, Chris, you take it, I gotta focus on driving. I know, it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. I have my notes on my phone to yeah. discuss all the wonderful things that happened and you know the things that were really learning experiences overall. Yeah. So we, just to, cause we were flustered after that, yeah. uh, so, we discussed the uh, Lilia and also Michael, who was the one who got Shannon and I a coffee, which honestly, I'm going to also do that moving forward. I'm yeah, going to try to do, do it that. like once where like I treat someone ahead of us or something or ask that way we can like potentially chit chat or do whatever. Just like, you know, do a nice thing. Like I want to yeah. pay Michael's kindness forward. Yeah. So TBD on that, we definitely will be doing this. But another thing that... This was kind of like, again, another learning lesson that wasn't, it wasn't that it wasn't positive, but it made me be like, damn it, Kristen, you're not taking your lesson seriously. So two, it's actually funny, it also happened at a coffee shop. Yes. The one another person that I didn't get her name and I regret not getting her name. Uh, there was this really long line at a coffee shop and uh, this woman that was like maybe two in front of me was so friendly, right? So she ended up like turning around and talking to me and this other woman about like, oh, isn't the line so long? Like, I love this coffee shop, I get da da da. And I'm sitting here like, this girl is so friendly. Like, yeah. I was like, wow, like, cause honestly the line was taking a very long time. Like we were there for like, I swear to God, 30 minutes. Yeah, like, waiting it was there. rough. It was rough. So she took the opportunity to be able to talk to people. And I was sitting there like, in my head being like, Kristen, ask for her name. Because like the thing is she's a local and she lived there because the way that she was talking to us was like, oh, you know, like there's this coffee shop that's over there that I was going to go to, but I didn't, da 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 and, I, and this was like kind of like towards the middle slash ending of the trip. So I started psyching myself out being like, well, why would I try to make a connection now when I'm leaving, you know? And then I hated that I did that, you know? Like yeah. we ended up di uh, diverting our ways and she got her coffee, but was still friendliest person, chit chatting with everyone else. And then I got my coffee being like, why didn't I get her name? Why didn't I just be like, hey, like I'm only here for a couple of weeks. Like what other fun spots do you like? Like we should grab a coffee. Like you're so fun and nice. You know what I mean? Like it could have been a friendship and I'm kicking myself I didn't do it. Yeah. And it's like, because of that though moment, it, it's really making me be like, Kristen, like don't regret that. Like you need to do these things moving forward. Yeah. Like, and again, take a page from that woman's book. Like you make random conversations happen. You never know who's gonna be that person to be like, hey, like you're so nice. Let's go grab a coffee or whatever it is. Let's you know? hang out. Let's hang out. Let's be friends. Let's crochet. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, I was really impressed because I like walked in the middle of it because I was also saving us yeah. a table at the time. But I was getting your, I was going to tell you my order. And I noticed this girl that Kristen's bringing up and she wasn't just talking to you. She was talking to someone across the room. And the thing is, some of these people, she didn't know. Like, no, you she knew had it. no She's idea. just like, isn't this a great day? And she was around our age. That was what, what like, kind of the perk of this interaction was because yeah. at this point they're all much older than us and there's no shade to that I like no ageist I like love anybody who's warm and welcoming to a conversation but it was really fun to see someone closer our age going out of their shell because I again I'm I feel like I'm sounding like such an introvert but because I work remotely I don't have as many opportunities to talk to people so like my social muscle is kind of like a little bit rusty it's not that I don't like it it's just I'm not used to it as much as I was back in the day when I was in person when I used to work at like an office and stuff yeah. or just in general like I don't like interact with too many people anymore so because of this and watching people I'm gaining more confidence or just more inspired and more ideas to like these are like non-committal easy things to do to meet people while you travel but also bring that joy to your day-to-day yeah. 
Um, but yeah, no, I really liked that girl. I mean, I was just like really impressed with her like social energy because sometimes I have my mornings, I respect it too, where I'm like, I just want I my coffee quiet. and yeah. I need quiet and I respect that where you need to like, you know, listen to your body and yeah. like know like, you know, I might not be the most social person right now and that's okay. Like don't yeah. like, you know, shame yourself for not having a moment all the time and that's what yeah. I try to do. But, but I feel I, like for me, it's sometimes mm -hmm. an ex not, I'm not saying this for the person who's listening. For, yeah. I'm talking for my personal experience. For me, sometimes I find myself wanting to do it, but yep. I don't do it. Those are the moments that I need to just go for it and not overthink it. Yeah. No, absolutely. And another thing, I'm going to have to look at my notes, uh, that uh, we ended up doing during this trip to potentially meet people slash keep our routine going is the gym. Oh, so I love that. Yeah. I will say we kind of failed a little bit at the gym Big in time. that way. Like, we had the intention to go, like, three times a week and only do classes. Like, our goal is to only do classes because that will allow us to be in the space with people, like, all the time, you know? Yeah. Because normally when Chen and I go to the gym, we'll just do our own thing, which is fine. Like, I, I like lifting weights and doing stuff. But especially with the goals of our intention of this trip, we want to do classes. Yeah. But I will say because, and we kind of talked about this even earlier, Florida is a transitional period for us. Yeah. So it did actually take us a minute to kind of get used to, like, the new routine, the new location that we really didn't get. We weren't able to really settle into the gym until, like, way later into our trip, you know? Which, it honestly made me reinforce that, like, I definitely need to do this in the beginning of our next trip. Because we started chit-chatting with people. Like, our, we, did. we did our first spin class. I remember this woman uh, came up to us because she has twin daughters. Mm -hmm. And was, like, starting to have a conversation with us. And, like, we started to see people on the regular and even like obviously the front desk people are gonna know us they actually even which is so cute oh man there was like a national siblings day or something and they made us post take a photo for their account you can find it on their instagram page at like crunch stewart or something yes yeah, so we funny. were laughing too because it was like here's the thing i would love to be an aesthetic girly i'm not all the time i'll be honest like yeah, i love no. them and i wish i could be them all the time i'm just not and it was one of those days that I was just not being an aesthetic girly. Yeah. So it was just so funny that that morning we were not. <laughs> no. Well, I was not, I should say. You look cute. I no, did. I, mean, I felt like I, I was like, oh, shit. I, I take a photo. Like, we were doing laundry that day, so we didn't really have any gym clothes to work with. So yeah. we just, like, had what we had. And I was like, and the funny thing is, is that, like, we're like, we're not really going to record this anyway. Like, who cares? Like, we'll just, you know, be bums and, like, go to the gym class. And then, yeah. like, the one time someone at the gym is like, can I please take your photo? I'm like, you're joking. Yeah. You're joking. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? But honestly, I'm also, like, I'm not that, like, vain where I'm like, Ugh, I think it's fine. No like, photos care. today. I'm like, eh, whatever. Like, it is what it it's, is. It's a photo. I don't it, care. It's yeah. like, this is me. I'm authentic. Like, well, I mean, not even this just is that. me at 6.30 a.m. I was like, I just, I don't have the energy or effort to look good this early in the morning. I don't care. Yeah, it's like, no, thank you. Uh, but not only, though, did we do the gym, and I feel like it's definitely going to reinforce me to do it in the next place, Savannah. Yeah. But the other place that I did stay consistent with uh, was my pottery class. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, so uh, one of my big goals, and again, going to reiterate that, you know, we want to meet people, do things. And one of the expectations I had of this course was that, you know, maybe I'll meet a friend. But I did anticipate, or I guess, that I think that it was going to be a lot of older people. I didn't think I was gonna meet a lot of people our age just because of the location that we're in. And I was accurate. Yeah. It really was women that were like older. And I'm gonna be honest, it was so nice. Sorry, we got I'm going, because we're going the speed I'm going limit. The speed limit. And get into the middle lane. I know, everyone is so ticked off at me. And I'm like, They're I like, just got a fucking speeding. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm angry because, I know, because we're, everyone we're else, going the speed I'm going the speed limit and now everyone's like this slow poke. I'm like, yeah, I was going the right speed, but someone I got pulled over and got a ticket. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is like the most like, literally next episode. time that they beat, I'm just gonna push against someone and they'll be like, we got a ticket. I'm so ticked. Dead. They're like they're like I just got beat dead. I know you did. I don't know if anyone can see this on the on the camera. There's yeah. so many people passing me by, and I'm like, yeah. I am going the speed I'm supposed to be going at. Yeah. And all of you people are obviously speeding around me but yeah. i'm the one who gets the ticket like i am oh it's sorry. okay it's okay Don't it's, worry fine. It. it's fine it's fine it just, happens if anything it almost i feel like kick stop starts our road trip we had to have gotten at least one, one ticket, ticket. Just it had to, to be one ticket christen okay? it. we had to christen the trip with a ticket okay? i'm more annoyed than i am upset or angry i'm yeah. just like really i just feel discriminated <laughs> i just feel like you saw my license plate it was like 
interesting. Let's let's get the New Yorkers. Because we're not gonna go to court to fight that. To fight that, exactly. So it's okay. Yeah, you can uh, send us money at GoFundMe for the ticket. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm gonna make a GoFundMe link. <laughs> Please help me, I'm poor. Please help me. Um, but back to our Sorry. schedule programming. That's Sorry. okay, I just think it's hilarious. This is what happens when you're recording on the road. Things I happen, know. it's okay. I know. Um, but pottery. So expectations were that I didn't think I was gonna meet anyone that were my age, and I was right, but what I didn't expect was, actually no, I kinda did expect it, I guess, how amazing the people were. Yeah. I felt like, and here's the thing, it was kind of like a healing thing too, because it was just very like, all these older women there, and also, just shout out to obviously my um, teacher as well, he was a man. So there was one there was one man there. We did guess that it was only gonna be all female, so there we go, we had a man in there. Yeah. Um, but I did have, I would say, and I don't mean to call out just certain people, but I'm gonna call out certain people because you did make an impression on me, was, uh, um, Laura, she, it was actually really funny because Laura knew my name. Uh, the woman who owned the studio kept calling me Christy. But you know what, honestly, uh, it's on me to not correct her. I just took it as a nickname at that point. I was like, you know what, it's cool, I'll be Christy to you. But Laura, every time, like she knew my name was Kristen, would say like, good morning, Kristen. Or like, you know, like kind of like say that to me, you know, yeah. which I thought was like, so cute in her own little way of like trying to you know let everyone know my actual name and then i really loved and i have to look real quick because there's just a lot of people uh, jl uh jl was literally um my such my buddy like she uh through clay you know we did clay together and she sat right in front of me so we had a lot of opportunities to be able to chit chat with each other and even just talk about like, you know, oh, I'm struggling today. And she'd be like, honey, like you're here. Like, I'm proud of you for getting here. And I'm like, God, I love her. You know what I mean? Like it was just this very healing thing about, cause I know something that I struggle with very deeply and hence why I do pottery is perfectionism. I think I like, you know, have a really hard time of just letting go and letting it be sometimes. So pottery, which is very much so against perfectionism in that way, or I feel that way because you can struggle so much and it not be perfect, you know? Like you could do everything right, but you could just have a day, you know? And uh, she was just always someone that like was always encouraging. Even when I had like, honestly, like the shittiest looking pot, everyone would be like, oh my God, it's beautiful. You did so good, honey. And I'm like, I love this group so much. It just like gave me such a confidence and just like, you know, almost this allowing myself to be okay with it not being the most perfect thing I've seen, you know? Just being there and uh, allowing yourself to, you know, not be perfect and to create a space that you're like, you know what? I'm proud, like congratulate yourself that you made it out of the house and doing things and meeting people and talking to them. And I constantly felt like I got reassured by them all the time in that way, which was really lovely. I think the most important thing and the takeaway for me for that for you, because obviously I didn't do pottery, yeah. but something I think for anyone who's listening, who's like, hey, like how do I make, how do I build a community? How do I make new friends when I travel? Or just even if you move somewhere new, I personally think it's to invest in things that you are interested. I mean, it seems yeah. obvious. It does. But like, I know. Do things that you're interested in because obviously you will meet like-minded people. And for you, it's like, you know, we're art people. Like, we love crafts. We love being creative. Yeah. And like you said, it's something that you want to push yourself. Doing pottery, you're meeting a group of individuals who also have the same sentiment as you or maybe they're, you know, learning, learning or, is, or yeah. they're advanced. Who knows what level that they're at. But regardless, it's a, it's a really amazing space and people to meet and I think that's awesome and I think it's really cool that you've decided while we travel that you're going to be participating in different pottery studios yeah. personally I would love which has been a real struggle for me yeah. I've actually yeah. wanted to get into painting more I wasn't very good at it I'm going to be honest it's not because I'm like some amazing artist <laughs> but I want to, I want to get better just for myself like yeah. every time I see a beautiful like sunset or sunrise or like a beach like like a uh, scenery I'm always captivated but I also wish I had the skill sets to paint it seriously I've had yeah. this weird itch lately and I was looking into painting classes in Florida and they didn't really have it it was more like going to a college but it's like a semester so it's like a few months and I'm like not something, yeah. I'm not here for that long and another thing that I wanted to point out or just like you know discuss things that like you know we kind of took away from Florida 
is also like where we stayed. So yeah. here's the thing. Obviously, it's not very normal, I would say, because we stayed in like a condo area. So there's already kind of a built-in community, you know? Like which, that's just kind of, you know. Which I didn't realize is something I wanted or yeah, needed well, I thought it was time. like cool. It's like, oh, I get, I get why people do, do this, it. Yeah, know? like 100%. I never really thought about it until I'm here. We were there and I was like, oh, like I see the appeal, you know? Like every time we go on a walk, it was always someone being like, good morning, hello. Like it was like, it felt like almost college again. I was going to say it felt like college. Yeah. It was senior college. Yeah, <laughs> They're like, all like everyone <laughs> is just, you know, in the same vicinity. And I also think it like reiterates to me being like, you know, being close to people that you care about and like having that sort of community and how that, you know, really affects people. Because I'm going to be honest, these are the happiest group of people I've ever seen. Yeah. Like these, these were a lot of, obviously a lot of retired older people there yeah. and they were the nicest group of people. Like we ended up uh, becoming, I would say like really good friends with our neighbor Sandy who lived directly above yeah. us. And he was just so sweet. Like every time he saw us, he always tried to make it a point to be like, there's bingo on Friday, there's this to like, because he knew we were there for a longer period of time and wanted us to like get to know other people and things like that. So it was just like really nice to see like people putting under their wings. But also what I really love to see is just the liveliness of the community. Like that shocked me more I, than anything. I, and I don't mean to sound like depressing when I say this, but like, you know, getting older can have its negative connotations. You know, your body doesn't work the way it wants to. Like there are things about it that, you know, make me upset. You know, and, and, and that's my own personal thing, you know? Yeah. But watching these people live their life to genuinely the fullest at the age that they're at made me excited to get older. I was like, oh, oh yeah. life just doesn't end. You know, like, life, yeah, life yeah. still keeps going on. And, like, thinking In about, miles, like, you know, how much right older. Use to take exit 333 GPS. for Florida 9B North toward Jack's Beach. Okay. And seeing how they still live their lives, like, day to day and, like, to the fullest makes me excited because like I mean I I still think we're young you know, like thinking about like you know we've, we're only what like 32 years like we're gonna be 32 this year 32 and then another 32 years like I was like that's fucking amazing how much we've lived now like we have a whole other like you know decades to live oh yeah and to see that and to see how they continue to flourish and be who they are makes me excited to also also reiterating that you know, how can I bring that to my day to day today? You know, like yeah. if I could constantly live on that, can you imagine what my life would be like? Oh yeah. You know, like I think that something was so cool and something that I was so grateful why we started in Florida. Oh I, yeah. I am so thrilled to end up being our transitional period because it really kind of got us jump started and also constantly, as we mentioned even previously, reiterated lessons to us on like, as we move forward, talk to that person in the coffee shop, you know, you know, you never know what it's going to be, you know, and I think that that's a lesson that I am excited to continue with our next location, yes. which is Savannah. I know. I'm excited about yeah, Savannah. I am so excited. So now as part two of this episode, and just like the last In previous episode, mile, use the right two lanes to take exit 333 for Florida 9B North toward Jack's Beaches. Okay. Uh, sorry, we need to pay attention. Um, so in this part of the episode, uh, just as we had in the previous one, we're going to talk about our expectations of Savannah and the things that we plan to do. And then in our next episode after that, it'll be what actually Savannah Use was. the right two lanes to take exit 333, then use any lane to take the four We have a third host on our podcast have, today. Yeah, welcome Google, Google Maps. Maps. <laughs> so Savannah. So this is actually a place that Shannon and I have been looking at to potentially live in or kind of, you know, get an experience on, you know, what it's like because we've heard just phenomenal things. We actually, shout out to one of our number one fans, Valerie. Yeah, She loves Savannah and had raved about it. So it was definitely someone who we trust and love and we're like, we have to go. Even, even if we don't live there. Mindset. Yeah, exactly. Even if we don't live there, we want to go here anyway. Um, so Savannah, here's the thing. So things that we are going to do, which we already kind of even talked about in our vlogs and even previously, we joined a book club. So this is also like we tr we're trying to figure out ways to meet people as organic as possible and the things that we'd like to do. So we're trying to, again, create spaces that we know that we have similar interests in. And that's also helps us kind of in conversation, you know, like yeah. being able to meet people. So with book club, we picked a romance book because we are a sucker for romance. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this book is really exciting. I'm so thrilled. I'm hoping we'll meet people. 
Yeah. You know, like I'm hoping we'll meet people our age, like who knows? So again, like I'm excited to, to see this. It's gonna be later today, which is actually really funny. So I can't wait to I really. I hope we have the it. stamina to go because I know we're obviously driving like six hours from like where we are to um, Savannah. Savannah, it's the millennial in me that's about to like come out, like cringe. But like I'm like YOLO, man. I want to. I just want to give it a shot, honestly, like yeah. fairly. And yeah, we're not gonna be there that long, so we might as well push ourselves to do it. And I think to your lesson for Florida, it's just like. Take up what opportunities you can. You just never know who you're gonna meet. Something that's exciting about Savannah as well is not only are we doing the book club, um, but I'm also, which Shannon already alluded to, pottery. Yes. Um, and the time that I picked, I'm actually really hoping, this is again, expectations we'll see, people more my age. So we will see um, like what the people are gonna be like. I have no idea. And again, I think what's exciting is that I already have common interests. I'm assuming these people are creative as well. And I'm excited to meet people there. Yes. Another thing that we looked into, because again, I think something that like when I'm doing research and finding things to either like meet people at, I'm again thinking of our interests. So I'm looking into running clubs. I'm looking into, you know, trying to play sports. If we can be like, you know, subs for subs teams. Subs for teams. So I actually messaged people who have those sort of like, you know, community recreational sports and be like, hey, if people need extra players let us know that way we could jump in on games and yeah. get to meet people we've been really into if you've been checking out the vlogs really into pickleball yeah <laughs> so yeah i'm hoping there's some pickleball league we can join because i feel like that'd be so fun i've been getting oh, really absolutely. into it lately so i think that'd be like the in funnest thing mark. ever Merge on yeah no, i am north. so excited like to be able to hopefully meet people while we do these sorts of activities yeah um i can't wait to look up all the spooky stuff uh okay like, for a good ghost tour yeah like oh I, my god i'm excited to kind of experience that you know like i think troy like kind of mentioned that who's who was a guest on our podcast uh about like, the spookiness of savannah so i'm excited to kind of experience it ourselves oh yeah um but you know savannah i think the reason why we were also like really like excited by it is Continue on i think something that's north for four uh, miles enticing about savannah is that it's a coastal city you know, yeah. I think that's something that like Sean and I look at when we're looking at places to live or potentially be at is that it has to be some sort of city in its own way because I need people. I can't be in like the middle of nowhere, you know, and that's yeah. just, I don't think like we want I do to, like to be people. busy. That's a yeah. thing. Like, I, like, I do I like, like activities. activities. Yeah. You know? Like I like activities. I like to do things. I like to meet people. So we hope that in being in cities and being in areas that are coastal, because we beach girlies, like, yeah, I love my mountains, but I'm definitely a beach girly. Yeah. Uh, that we are close to one. So that's something that, or a reason why we chose Savannah. Yeah. And I'm honestly like really looking forward to kind of seeing like what Savannah has in store for us. I really actually have high expectations for Savannah. Like, Higher than I did for Florida and yes. Florida exceeded there. So I'm really excited for Savannah. And yeah. to be totally honest, something that like, obviously we have some intention walking into Savannah, but something I'm going to take away, like the lesson from Florida is embracing the spontaneity because that brought so many great memories for the both of us because we're planners at heart and we love to like have some fun ideas, but sometimes the best, I mean, anyone who knows this, even with traveling, some of the best memories are always just going with the flow or like meeting that person and yeah. they invite you to this random place. Or making and that wrong turn and finding that most, the, the best cafe you've ever been to. Yeah, you know? and with Florida, we had, like I said in the first episode, we did not have anything planned. We had no expectations. We were just going in with a blind eye. And yeah. even though with Savannah, we have some more context this time, what I'm taking away from Florida into Savannah is regardless of the context, regardless of the places I know I want to visit, I definitely still want to explore with a bit of blindness in a way to be like, hey, like, let's just see where today takes me and let's also talk to some people and like, you know, gain the confidence I've gained because of Florida, honestly. Look at you, you made it to the end. <laughs> Now that we have you here, we'd like to do a little shameless plug-in. Of course. <laughs> and encourage you to follow us on all social platforms at The, the Vogel Twins. If you want to know more about, like, in-depth about our travels, definitely check out our website, thevogeltwins.com. Thanks for tuning in. Bye! Bye.